because he's in more trouble than anyone in America, probably who's ever been subpoenaed in front of a congressional investigation. I mean, this guy is, is under investigation for crimes ranging from, from money laundering to securities fraud and everything in between. If he gets voted in contempt of Congress, that's more penalties that he's going to have to pay uh, a price for uh, when his, his judgment day finally happens. And that was House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer with me right here yesterday on this program laying out Hunter Biden's legal woes. Hunter Biden now in even more trouble this morning. He's been indicted on nine tax-related charges in California. He is facing up to 17 years in prison for allegedly failing to pay at least $1.4 million in taxes over four years and writing off trips to strip clubs as business expenses, among other allegations. Hunter's lawyers are out with this statement this morning. If Hunter's last name was anything other than Biden, the charges in Delaware and now California would not have been brought. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Carlos Jimenez. He's a member of the House Armed Services, Homeland Security and Select Committee on China. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Some might say if his name wasn't Biden, he would not have been able to make all this money in the first place. Your reaction? Uh, this is part of the Biden criminal you know, family criminal enterprise. And so, you know, these, uh, these charges, especially the ones that say that he was living a lavish lifestyle, well, was it a lavish lifestyle or a lot of that money and you flowed into the family business? And so, you know, we need to keep following this uh, where it leads. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is leading to the, the Biden family, uh, the brother and the president himself. What, what does this mean for Hunter's uh, proposed testimony on Wednesday? He was supposed to go behind closed doors on Wednesday, right? Yeah, I don't know what it means. Uh, will he show up? Uh, if he doesn't show up, he could be found in contempt of Congress, uh, and that, that leads to other charges and other problems, uh, legal problems for, for Hunter, Hunter Biden. But, uh, you know, it may be very difficult for him to show up and try to explain where all this money came from and uh, why did this money come to him and where, in fact, did all this money go to? Why did he have 20, at least 20, shell companies that we know of uh, and so, you know, the more that he talks, uh, the more more avenues will now be open for additional investigation. I think we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg here. I don't think we've gotten to the bottom yet. Well, maybe, but the president says he has no idea about any of this, that he's not involved in any of this. The House Rules Committee will consider a resolution to formalize that impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden on Tuesday of next week. The 14-page resolution lays out rules uh, and public hearings and uh, directs the committees to produce a public report on their findings. Hunter Biden's former business partner, Tony Bobulinski, uh, told me that he wants some answers from President Biden. Uh, he released this statement yesterday. Uh, he sent me this statement, and I want to read it to you. I am a former decorated naval officer who was willing to die for this great country and held the highest security clearance issued by the Department of Energy. Why is Joe Biden blatantly lying to the American people and the world by claiming that he did not meet with me face to face? He should call his son Hunter and brother Jim as they can remind him of the facts. The American people deserve the truth. Congressman Tony Bobulinski was a partner of Hunter Biden, and he told me yesterday, of course, he's met Joe Biden. Uh, what is Joe Biden, the president of the United States, his role in all of this? I think Joe Biden is, uh, is the brand. And, and the only reason that Hunter Biden was making all this money that he had to evade taxes for was because his father was the vice president of the United States. And so you know, the, the Biden name has been the brand and has been the brand for some time. Uh, and so, you know, for, for Joe Biden to blatantly lie to the American people and said he had no idea what uh, his son's business interests uh, were, uh, that he never met with any of his business partners, we all know that's, that's, that's a blatant lie. We have testimony, we have evidence that he met with them dozens and dozens of times, different partners from around the world. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, uh, Wablinski is absolutely right. The president of the United States uh, has been lying to the American people, but hey, the president of the United States has been lying to the American people for 40 years. This is not. This is nothing new. Uh, this is what he does and what he has done through his entire political career. Well, do we know how America has been impacted? In other words, was he getting paid for making policy decisions in favor of adversaries or foreigners like China? Well, listen. Um, I've said all along that none of what what uh, President Biden has been doing uh, since he became president makes sense unless you view it through that lens, 
that somehow he's compromised. And we know yeah. that he's received money from Ukraine, China, Russia, okay. uh, Uzbekistan, and, and a, a bunch of other places. All right. right. And so, yeah, it makes, it makes absolute sense that maybe the president of the United States could be compromised. That's why we need to have this inquiry. And the people of America, America needs to know exactly where their president stands. Congressman, let me move on to another issue, and that is an explosive hearing uh, with uh, several university presidents this week, and uh, your colleague Elise Stefanik putting them on uh, on notice. Watch this. Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment. I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules? It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct. It depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. And donors agree with Elise Stefanik. The Wharton Board of Advisors is calling for the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Liz McGill, to resign now after her testimony. This uh, testimony you just heard, her and her other college presidents unable to say that the genocide, calling for the genocide of Jews, violates their code of conduct, uh, as the school is expected to lose a major $100 million donation as a result of this, Congressman. Donors are running. Uh, let me bring Cheryl Cassoni in on this. Go ahead, Cheryl. Well, Maria, it's not just that $100 million, but now, now they've got this new investigation that's going to be launched by the House. And, Congressman, I want to get your take on this, because now that you've got the Education Committee that's going to launch this full investigation, Elise Stefanik is going to be obviously leading the charge on this. What is the goal? Because, obviously, with these universities, money's the only thing that's going to talk at this point, or mm. these presidents need to be shown the door. But what is the goal of, these, of this new investigation by the House uh, against these, these presidents? and what do you want to see happen at the end of it? I think the goal is to show the utter hypocrisy of these presidents and that, uh, you know, uh, it, you, may be, you may be disciplined for uh, mislabeling somebody. They want to be called a she and they need to be called they. Uh, but uh, when you call for the, uh, the destruction and the, and the murder of, uh, of the Jewish people, no, it, it, it all depends on the context. I mean, I mean the, the, the question couldn't have been more direct. And the fact that she couldn't answer that question tells you everything you need to know. And this has been coming on for a long, long time, and we need to uncover it. All this stuff is the genesis is right there in our institutions of higher learning. And a lot of it's coming from these, you know, Ivy League schools. So, yeah, we need to uncover everything that's going on there and the corruption of the young minds that is occurring at these institutions of higher learning. Yeah, what a great point in terms of the pronouns. We're worried about he, she, they, and yet they're allowing this yeah. to take place on campus. Disgusting. Congressman, we'll be watching your yes. investigation. Thank you, sir.